Here is the latest iteration of my um, solar project, actually my solar shed, and using um, APC UPS as an inverter. Well, I started off using um, an APC, as you can see right there, um, a back UPS Pro 1400. This one puts out like 950 watts, which is decent. But uh, I had an issue with it. <laughs> um, it actually fried my fan. Yep. I had an electric fan in it to cool my shed. And this UPS actually fried my fan. And uh, it turns out that this UPS is actually a modified sine wave um, UPS. And um, as a result, uh, anything that runs off an electric motor... You don't want to plug it um, into a modified sine wave UPS. So, ever since it killed my fan, I have been hesitant to use it. And uh, I just put it aside for right now. If I have to run anything that doesn't run um, off a, um, you know, doesn't have an AC motor, then I will use this inverter. For example, a computer is perfect to run off of this um, inverter. Well, I've switched over to another APC unit and as you see I've modified it somewhat I installed um, just a regular cigarette lighter adapter on it and from there it goes into the APC unit and it connects to where the battery is normally connected um, like most APC units this this is actually a 24 volt unit and what makes this one so special even though it's a smaller version it's only 450 watts versus the 950 watts um, that, that I was using previously is that this APC unit is actually a pure sine wave inverter. Yes, it's the APC Smart UPS 700. And that's the key. It's a pure sine wave inverter which makes it perfect um, to use with um, AC motors fluorescent lamps and so on and so forth so this is what I'm going to actually use for right now um, if I need more power and I need to go out and buy an inverter then I'll buy a pure sine wave bigger inverter to use um, with my household equipment but so far I've learned my lesson well that hey um, if you have AC uh, motor fans you don't want to mess with a modified sine wave inverter or you know you will destroy it well that actually happened to me so here's what I've done. Um, as you can see, as I said before, I installed this cigarette adapter. And this goes into my battery bank and it connects to my two 12-volt um, batteries connected in series, providing a 24-volt system. So it's working well right now. I'm actually in my shed right now. Um, um, it's, it's about 8.40 p.m. Eastern time right now. And if you look up, there is light. And it's all coming from this inverter right now. And as I said previously, I don't plan to use this inverter just for, for lighting, but just to play with, you know, it's perfect. Uh, there's my, uh, my plug right there and my light switch. I also have over here in my wall uh, a DC lamp, which connects to my Renegade charge controller. And if I press this button right here, I will engage this lamp. As you can see, it's extremely bright. It's a very bright um, LED um, light. It's 27 watts of power. So this is bright enough to um, illuminate my shed. Um, but so that's, that's how things are right now. Um, and this is a really nice charge controller. It's made by Renergy. Um, it's a solar charge controller, um, 30 amp. And uh, I have I only have two panels right now. Two two. Um, to 100 watt panels on my shed um, providing a total of 200 watts of power and um, These panels are connected in series to provide a 24 volt system each panel being 12 volts So I'm getting like 8.33 amps out of these panels. So Looking at my wiring. This is a wiring coming from my solar um, panels and there we go uh, This is just regular um, 14 gauge wire I have right there and um, the 14 gauge wire it goes into from my disconnect switch to my charge controller right there 
and um, then you see where, where the battery connects. This battery actually goes to this connection, rather these connections go into um, my battery bank, and then here's my lamp, which is right here. So this wire is actually a 14 gauge wire, which is you know enough to um, carry eight amps. And um, one important thing to note is that the wire that's coming from your charge controller going into um, your battery bank it doesn't have to be a big wire because it, this this is pretty much just sending the current down there it's not it's not say drawing um, additional amps so it doesn't really have to be a very big wire at all if it's sending 8 amps it's just going to send 8 amps but what you have to be careful of is a wire that actually connects from your battery to your inverter you have to ensure that that wire is heavy enough to carry the extra um, amps that the inverter will require. So, one important thing: the battery, that's um, the wire that's coming from, or the wires that's coming from your charge controller to your batteries, doesn't have to be a big bat, a big wire, because it's only charging the battery, and it's just um, if it's sending eight amps, it's going to be eight amps. But what one important thing to note is that the, the wire is coming from your battery or the wires just coming from your battery going to your inverter needs to be a beefed up wire to match the the amps that the inverter will draw so anyway that's an update from my shed right now this is going well and um i wanted this smart apc ups out here because um i need to plug in a fan in my shed because it's very very hot in here and I want to get some um, circulation. So, from the shed, this is, a, this is an update. And thank you very much for, for viewing. As you, see, as you can see, the temperature right now, and uh, um, it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in here right now. It's a little bit humid, um, but um, it's overcast on the outside. So, from the shed, this is an update. Thanks for viewing. Have a great day.